Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. I'm currently knitting a pair of my one sock, two sock, red sock, blue sock socks. And because this pattern uses mosaic or slip stitch color work for much of the sock, it's a lot like working alternating stripes that are each two rounds thick. Unfortunately, when you knit stripes like this in the round, there's often a little jog where you change colors from one color to the next. Today, I'm going to show you a simple trick to minimize that jog. Let's get started. First, let's look at a swatch that I'm making and pay attention to what's happening as I'm changing colors from one to the next, right here where things are jogging a little bit and not lining up. I'm almost to the end of the second round of my white stripe. If I'm very careful when I change colors from the white to the purple, and I pull the white out of the way, and then begin working with the purple so that these two working yarns are not crossed at all on each other, something funny happens. I end up with a jog both here on the right side of my work, but also on the wrong side of my work, where the stripes just don't quite line up across that gap. There are a couple of different ways you can neaten things up. One way is to knit helically with one ball of yarn for each round of the stripe pattern. So you'd end up with two balls of white yarn and two balls of purple yarn. It completely eliminates the jog, but it also makes your stripes slant a little bit at an angle. And you also have to be working with multiple balls of yarn, which can be cumbersome, but that's going to be a topic for another day. My alternative is to simply twist the yarns around each other whenever you change color. So I'm going to back up a couple stitches here. So I've just finished knitting with my white. If I bring that old color of yarn over the top of the new color that I'm going to be working with. The previous yarn, this white yarn, is going to be caught and anchored when I form the first stitch. So the white went over the top of the purple. And then if I look at the back, it's anchored in place right here after I knit that first stitch. Then I'm going to go ahead and knit all the way around the first round of my purple stripe. As I get to the end of the first round of my stripe, I'm going to be very careful here that I don't twist the two yarns around each other. I'm going to keep the white just hanging down and out of the way, and then I'll continue on with the purple so that those two yarns don't twist around each other. I'm almost done with the second round of the purple stripe. Now it's time to change colors again. I'm going to insert my right needle knitwise through here just to hold my needles in place to make it a little bit easier for me to manipulate and for you to see as I make this change. So the purple yarn is going to the left over the top of the white yarn that I'm going to start with. I'm going to just kind of hold that in place with my fingers. And then I'm going to pick up that white yarn and begin knitting. And as I knit that first stitch, the purple yarn is going to be anchored in place. One thing to look at as you're beginning that first stitch of the round is your tension. You do not need to pull the white yarn or the next yarn you're using too tight. You don't want this last stitch to be super tiny. 
you want to maintain a nice even tension across that change. So the stitch may need to be tightened a little, but there's no need to go crazy. Just maintain a nice even tension. And then continue on. After knitting a few more stripes, you can see that on the right side of my swatch, the jog is greatly minimized as opposed to the way it was earlier. Now let's look at the wrong side of the knitting. You can see on the wrong side now, I have this vertical line where the two yarns twist e around each other at the color change. And this is an S twist. So if I drew an imaginary letter S, the center of the S would slant in the same direction as the yarn. If you're knitting hats or mittens or sweaters, this technique can be a simple way to neaten up alternating two round stripes so they match up. Most likely, no one is ever going to see this vertical stripe on the wrong side of your knitting. And if they do, it's still very, very tidy. But as I said earlier, I'm using this trick to knit a pair of socks. Again, only the wearer is ever going to see this vertical line on the inside of the socks. However, there is something important to remember. With socks, it's really important that your color change happens at the sides of the sock because sensitive feet may be bothered by this vertical stripe here if this twist is at the bottom of the foot. I hope you enjoyed learning one way to minimize the jog when knitting alternating two round stripes. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you're ready to try this technique in a pattern, head over to the shop section of thechillydog.com and look for my one sock, two sock, red sock, blue sock pattern. Until we stitch again, happy knitting.